Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. Wright. I'm a high school math teacher. Hold your applause. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you all for taking it anyway. Um, I teach pre-calculus and AP calculus, and uh, my plan this year is to have my students write some spoken word mathematical poetry. And so that I may lead by example, I wrote my first poem about the most beautiful, the most sexy of all the mathematical curves, and I'm talking about the sinusoidal curve picture here. Yeah. Oh, we got some sinusoidal fans here. All right, all right. Check it out. Holy shit! Yeah, I got visuals. Sinusoidal curve. You got some nerves swinging that thing all up and down the x-axis. Now let me ask this. Have you ever spread your stuff on the catwalk? Yeah, on the catwalk? Up and down, down and up. Make up your mind. I'm trying to find which way you're going because I ain't knowing the rules. But I bet you'd be bending them. Your mood swings like a pendulum in a simple harmonic motion like the waves of the ocean can be described by your very equation. Speaking of which, Y equals A times sine, open parentheses, B, open parentheses, X minus H, close parentheses, close parentheses, plus the K? <laughs> the equation's got some size, man. You get most men that eyes, man. But all wise men, and I open my eyes and see you for what you really are, which is powerful and beautiful like a star. It's a tiny subtle curve. I've been checking out your form, man. Here's what I observe. The lambda A gets ample dues for providing your amplitude, causing amounts of solar bodies to plunge into colossal vertical stretch, or collapsing the entirety of your landscape and catapult into vertical shrink. The lambda B baffles brothers constantly because it stretches and shrinks horizontally in a manner contrary to what intuition might apply. But at least we see it has the decency to calculate your frequency when it's actually values divided by 2 pi. Parameters H and K. We've seen this combination in previous transformation conversations in relation to the causation and relocation in the form of horizontal and vertical translation. So, is that adequate confirmation of my mathematical dedication? I'm so curved. I'm building up my nerve. I want to slither and slide up and down your slippery slopes and suddenly broke the negative crest with the positive second derivatives in the positive crest with the negative second motives. It'd be so confusing, but I ain't one for losing, so I just see infusing my passion and using this numerical cruise. And at the end of my ride, I want to lay back and ride back and forth like a precious pearl rolling between increasing and decreasing intervals in your vision before surreptitiously settling in the small of your back. That's what amongst majestic mounds of mathematical marble. Some sort of curve. You get that and swerve. I want to feel your gravity as the citron cavity at every single point of inflection, then change direction and cross another X intersection. My initial objection given away to affection because I feel such connection to your mathematical perfection. Ooh, I just got an erection. <laughs> So I got what you deserve. The rest of the schools, they don't get your appeal, but every time we get close with you, I come appeal. I know that the implants, your domain is all real. So can I get into your range? Call it back, what the deal? Thank you. Yeah, that, that, poem, that poem obviously was for the lady. Who knew that to be so tough? I thought that was for me. And you. <laughs> <laughs> for all the math lovers in the house this evening. Uh, I got one more short poem for you here. Um, and let me just say about that last one, um, I am going to clean that up before I use it in my classroom because I don't want to be that teacher that you read about in a paper uh, sometime later. <laughs> <laughs> 